When Dolly announced via the Ark Survival Evolved Twitter account that Ark is going to be remastered to Unreal Engine 5, the whole world was standing still for like 5 seconds while everyone was asking themselves, wait what? I surely did not have this on my bingo card for 2023, but yet here we are. And the announcement was not really an announcement, but Dolly being Dolly posted a meme, so half the people didn't believe that it was real, and the other half believed it was real and started panicking. And I belong to the second group, and let me explain to you what happened the days after the announcement. As you know, or maybe not, then you know now, the Arc Utils website I'm promoting here once in a while because I worked on it so much to help people with Arc is based on a big data project. The project collects all the data of Arc that is relevant and offers it for free for everyone who wants to work with it. So it is used by Arc Smart Breeding to know creature stats, colors and color regions and it is used by the Arc Wiki for basically everything. Then stats, color regions, colors, spawn maps and much more. For Arc Utils we use the data set for Dino Data as well. For example the Incubator Calculator uses the up-to-date Arc data to calculate your Dino stats. Our Bossopedia always pulls the correct boss drop infos and the info about which items you need to start the boss. Also, the boss's life is taken from the data. And this is super handy because keeping all these things up to date manually is a lot of work and if we look into how much the wiki already struggles finding writers, it is no wonder that this is a thing that needs to be automated. So everyone has working companion sites and tools. The programs that are collecting this data cannot handle Unreal Engine 5 because they are written for Unreal Engine 4. It is a manual project by several people who worked on it for years to run the way it runs now. And it is the foundation for many ARC tools, the wiki and therefore it's also important for us content creators. I talked to the main maintainer just a few days before the Unreal 5 announcement what the plans for ARC 2 are. A working infrastructure for the new game is crucial for people to play it long term. Arc is a game that needs the wiki and I'm absolutely certain Arc 2 will be just the same. But the outlook on an Arc 2 support were looking grim because most people who help with the project are not available anymore. And right now the work is on the shoulders of just one person. So if there will be Arc 2 support, maybe if help can be found that wants to support the project. But Arc 1 was still up and running, everything worked and then the announcement happened. The group chat I was in had just one reaction to it. Well, shit. See, the thing we always could rely on was that the years of work of those people put into the project were still there even after Arc 2 launches. Arc 1 will still stay supported, but now with Unreal Engine 5, we face the same problem that we are facing with Arc 2. A lot of work on the shoulders of just one person. But what does that mean for Arc 1 players? There is a chance that changes to the game after it is ported to Unreal Engine 5 might not be supported anymore by the wiki or the Arc Smart Breeding program because the underlying infrastructure can't be changed. I talked to the maintainer and he said what we're looking into is a long and intensive rewrite of probably the biggest Arc projects. Something that took a handful of skilled programmers several years. But that is not the only problem we are facing. Zenro, who is the direct contact person for the modding community, mentioned in the modding discord that mods will need to be recooked with a new update so they work under Unreal Engine 5. This is if the Unreal Engine 5 update doesn't break them. And this leads to several problems. First, many modders are inactive and don't support or update their mods anymore. Hence, a lot of mods are still from 2016 or 2017 and it is luck that they didn't break yet. But they will for sure with the remaster. We will lose a lot of mods that we are used to play with. Long running clusters like ours that runs with several mods, also older mods, will have big problems maintaining the safe game without having players lose a lot. Sure, modders could update their mods and let's just pretend we live in a perfect world where every modder is willing to do so. They will need the mod kit for it, so the dev kit, which may or may not be available for months after the release. And Fyodo came out last year in June. So even in a perfect world where every mod maker really looks forward to update their mod, it might take months for them to do so. And this is only mods. 
While Unreal Engine 4 and 5 are supposed to be compatible if we believe Jeremy Stieglitz, I'm scared that even small things might break things big time. If we look on how much breaks in the game by just switching the game language, I'm not as positive as I usually am. Another thing I'm concerned about is the performance on low-end machines. As you know, I myself have a toaster for a PC and it sometimes runs are good, sometimes it doesn't. Many of you have complained about it in the past and this is why I switched to GeForce Now with almost all of my recordings until YouTube pays me enough so I can replace my computer. I'm concerned that machines like mine or even older ones because I often hear what people run their game on and what hardship they have to experience to get even two digit FPS numbers have to go through in order to run an Unreal Engine 5 game. Unreal Engine 5 is ultimately made for newer hardware in mind and this is a development we cannot stop. But will every person who bought ARC be able to run it still after the remaster? And how long do devs actually need to support certain hardware combinations? My GPU is slowly being the minimum requirement for running games and it might not be sufficient enough anymore despite Unreal Engine 5 in general being more performant. But let's not just be negative because there are also a lot of good things in Unreal Engine 5 compared to 4. Arc was built on a makeshift own version of Unreal Engine 4 that was not made with a plan in mind that Arc will grow the way it did now. The scalability reached its limits long time ago and many things implemented after often had to be hacked into the game with tricks to make it run because the old engine already called quits. So switching from Unreal Engine 4 to 5 in Arc is a big improvement since the Unreal Engine 4 version was not optimized for the demands of Arc. With Unreal Engine 5 Arc will most likely have a better performance on average and improved visual quality as the engine has been specifically designed for high quality real time graphics. Unreal Engine 5 comes with a new technology called Nanite that allows for high resolution assets to be used in the game with a better performance compared to Unreal Engine 4. Nanite is only available for graphic cards with direct 12 support. While we probably won't have a lot of improve when it comes to the texture resolution, because we don't know if Wildcard actually kept the high resolution textures of dinos and environment assets or if they had them in the first place, one thing that can solve is like the switching between different resolution steps when you move away further from an object. Those flips you remember when an object becomes low resolution when you move away, those flips will disappear because they are done dynamically in real time depending on the view angle. Right now in Arc you can see the visible flip or switch between low detail and high detail depending on your distance in an object. Everyone remembers the iconic low poly animals when you're loading into a very full base. And with Unreal Engine 5.1, Nanite also works for foliage, so for leaves. The only place where you do not want to use Nanite and where it's also not optimizing anymore is hair and fur and anything very small and very fine. But this might be changed in future versions too. Since I don't think they're using higher resolution textures for the remake, there's also a chance that the game files might be smaller. But this is highly dependent on how they make the remaster. UE5 is said to have a way better compression compared to UE4 if we believe Epic. So maybe we can profit from this as well. Unreal Engine 5 also comes with Lumen, which will improve the lighting. Did you ever have bright sunshine in an enclosed space or in a cave that did not make sense? Lumen fixes that and it also allows light to bounce off surfaces. Right now if you want to have light to reflect you had to place an invisible light source as a developer. Lumen does calculate light to be almost real life realistic. With the newest version of Unreal Engine 5.1 it also supports realistic light reflection on glass and water. But Lumen requires a little bit of a stronger GPU. You need at least an RTX card of the 2000 series or an AMD starting with the RX 6000 series. We do not have any information if these technologies are actually used in the remake, but making a remaster without using the key technologies of Unreal Engine 5 would make the effort to port a whole game to a new engine somewhat a waste of time. Another point that also speaks for the remaster is that it will attract new players that were initially turned off by the age graphics of Arc. And let's be real, Arc is now 8 years old and by it aged just fine, it can't compare to the new games published. And the remaster will help to attract these kind of players. But one thing I asked myself and probably a lot of other people as well, why? 
Let's think about it for a second. Ark was officially already said to be not abandoned, but basically in maintenance mode. So bug fixes and patches will happen, but events were ended, no new content was planned. We already said our goodbyes to Ark 1 and waited for Ark 2 announcements, but then suddenly we get an Ark 1 remaster. And not only that, we also get a new creature voting. For yet another dino added to the game while the Kakarodontosaurus was supposed to be the last animal added to Ark 1? So my prediction is we will not see Ark 2 this year. And I don't say this with a negative tone because I want them to make it right. I want them to take as much time as possible to make Ark 2 a good follow-up game. Not only because I'm an Ark content creator and my content is dependent on how well they do their job, but also because I put my heart into this franchise and I want it to succeed. I don't want Ark 2 to be a disappointment or broken on release, but I want it to be done well. So if that means we get it next year, so be it. In the end, a lot of questions will stay unanswered until we get the official announcement Jeremy talked about. In short, remastering Ark Survival Evolved in Unreal Engine 5 is a big deal and there's a lot to consider. On one hand, it could mean a better looking and smoother playing game, but on the other hand, it could also mean most of our mods won't work anymore and it might be harder for players with older computers to play. We don't know how much it will break in general. From the point of view when it comes to the data project for Ark, I hope there will be more people with required knowledge willing to help out. In a way, Ark 1 could then be considered a test run for Ark 2. And there's a lot of ifs in this conclusion. A lot of hope and a lot of fear. And as a player I'm excited for Unreal Engine 5 Remaster, but when I'm looking into the modern programmer circles I see more concern than excitement. And let's hope Wildcat finds a solution that makes everyone happy. But what are your thoughts about the Unreal Engine 5 remaster of Ark Survival Evolved? Let me know in the comments and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one, bye!